the most serious challenge to the world in this new millennium is a growing chasm between rich people and poor people where we don't understand them, they don't understand us, and there is a lack of concern about their plight. For more than two decades, the Carter Center has worked to bridge this chasm, inspired by the belief that all humans have a right to peaceful and healthy lives. I think the most pertinent umbrella that you could put over the Carter Center's programs would be that of human rights. And since my earliest days in the White House, I have seen that phrase expanded in its meaning. Today, the Carter Center has turned this broad concept of human rights into action through a wide range of programs that help to resolve conflict, plant the seeds of democracy, and ease suffering from hunger and disease. These programs have brought hope to millions of people in more than 65 nations around the world. Their impact over the past two decades, along with President Carter's leadership in negotiating the Camp David Accords between Israel and Egypt, led to his being honored with the Nobel Peace Prize in 2002. Today, the need for the Carter Center's work is greater than ever. When we mention three A's of Carter Center work, we talk about action programs, we talk about an academic link with Emory University and other prominent universities around the world, and we talk about access at the highest levels of government. The Carter Center work is so different. We get into the villages, we see the people, we get to know them, and also we get to know how much we can help them. Help, poverty, war, despair are linked in one daunting cycle. The Carter Center works to break that cycle wherever it can. One way is through personal diplomacy. In North Korea, Mr. Carter's talks with the former dictator, Kim Il-sung, helped to avert a new war in the Korean Peninsula. He's a great emissary and a great peacemaker, and that was a marvelous example of making peace. In 1999, President Carter brokered an agreement between the governments of Sudan and Uganda, and diplomatic exchanges between the two sides resumed. In response to a long-standing invitation from President Fidel Castro, he boldly reached out to open a dialogue with all sectors of Cuban society included were those whose voices are seldom heard. Most recently, the Carter Center led the effort to build a stronger human rights commission in the United Nations. President Carter and a number of Nobel Peace Prize laureates got together and issued a public statement calling for the adoption of the reform of the Human Rights Council and pushing the member states to adopt a very good agreement. The Carter Center has been at the forefront of organizations surmounting the barriers to peace and democracy. More and more outside friends of countries at risk can try to act to prevent the hardship and the abuse of people within those countries. Sovereignty has been a barrier to that. I think the peace programs have at their heart the idea that peace is just not the absence of conflict, presence of justice. The Carter Center has been asked to monitor more than 60 elections in 25 countries. That includes votes in Palestine, Nigeria, Indonesia, East Timor, and Liberia. Well, first it's important to know that um, holding elections and becoming democratic are not the same thing, but it's one of just many, many steps that are required. Now we're much more concerned with pre-election issues and post-election issues. The Carter Center also helps to standardize procedures in local elections in the People's Republic of China, with elections held in more than 350,000 Chinese villages. It changed the outlook of the Chinese presidents. I think that's the most important impact, is that they see the whole political process uh, being open to choose uh, who they have confidence in. 
For more than two decades, the Carter Center's Americas program has worked alongside countries in the Western Hemisphere. Ten years ago, we were really focusing on elections as the fundamental principle of democracy. Today, we're focusing more on access to information, campaign finance, and working to collectively promote and defend democracy. Think just for a minute, how many of you have been victims of corruption? You can't build and maintain peace built on human misery and empty stomachs. When they're empty stomachs, you are creating a politically explosive situation and you won't be able to maintain peace for any length of time. As a partner with the Sasakawa Africa Foundation, the Carter Center helps farmers to help themselves. With these simple improvements, more than four million African farmers have been able to triple and even quadruple their yields. Together with donors and volunteers, the Carter Center continues to wage successful campaigns against diseases. The neglected tropical diseases don't kill, but they maim. They make people's lives miserable. Those diseases include cystosomiasis, which stunts growth and normal development in young children. Another is lymphatic filariasis, also known as elephantiasis, there are two diseases that cause blindness, trachoma and onchocerciasis, or river blindness. River blindness is so widespread in Africa that the Carter Center is working primarily to bring it under control. We have the opportunity to completely eradicate river blindness from the Americas, and that's what the Carter Center is trying to do. I'm personally proudest of the uh, our work in the Game Eradication Program. We have, through this program, helped millions of people in developing countries to improve their lives. And in the process, we've invigorated ministries of health. Today, it is more than 99% conquered worldwide. This was accomplished by educating communities to use simple filters and straw-like pipe filters to strain guinea worm larvae from drinking water. To stop the spread of bacteria causing trachoma, the center teaches children personal hygiene. In recent years, the program has also taught villages how to build latrines to prevent contamination. We have produced over a quarter of a million of them in the last three years, helping people who are forgotten and isolated and often without hope. That describes exactly the people who suffer from trachoma. Working with ministries of health and local officials, the Carter Center has built an efficient and inexpensive infrastructure to deliver medical treatment and health education. This also impacts communities. People can farm, farmers can go back to work, children can go back to school. Overall, the communities are healthier. I started from Uganda. I did the surveys for this disease. I did the mapping. I educated my people. And now, at the Carter Center, I'm able to take my experience to the whole of Africa. We know that mental illness is a disease as any other. The Rosalind Carter Fellowships for Mental Health Journalism support journalists who report on this subject in the field. And I like to say that the fellowship program is like tossing a stone in a, in a pond. There are ripples. And so when journalists go back to their newsrooms, they bring a new perspective about the importance of mental health and how it should be reported. It can be diagnosed, it can be treated, and almost everyone suffering from mental illness can be helped, and most can live more normal lives. The Carter Center programs work. They work because the path from plan to action is direct and practical. The Carter Center doesn't act alone. We act with the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Education in the country that we're working in. We work in terms of partnerships with other organizations. We work with the community. Well, every once in a while I think back about the implication of eradicating guinea worm disease, which has been around since biblical times. When you think about it, you stop for a while and you're like, oh my goodness, this is incredible.
all of the work of the Carter Center is filled with uh, compassion and, if I can use the word, love. So I think that what the Carter Center is doing is presenting the finest aspects of life, moral values, and hopefully America's concern about others, putting its best image of America in the forefront of the minds of literally millions of people around the world. We are one of those few organizations that are reliable, trustworthy, and will deliver. People invest their money in us, and we take it seriously.